So uh, welcome you all, welcome and thank you for joining us for the uh, next in the Admiral Market Trading Spotlight uh, webinar series. Uh, my name's Paul Wallace. Today I'm here to talk about the uh, the trading dream versus uh, the reality. So uh, something that uh, might be uh, very pertinent to yourself into your uh, in your own present experience or something that you're kind of keen to understand if you're uh, completely new to uh, to trading uh, as always i just to ask you if you're uh, here joining us just uh, just in the chat box just uh, give me a little indication of you know what uh, what level of trading experience you have whether you're a complete beginner or whether you've been trading for many years that helps me uh, to understand what uh, what sort of kind of level that uh, i want to be able to talk to you at and also it's also a good idea if uh, if you know if you can uh, if you're kind enough to sort of share with us what uh, what what you believe your trading dream is or what has been your trading reality and uh, you know even if you're watching this on uh, on demand on later on the uh, admiral markets youtube channel or facebook page or on uh, in traders yard then uh, yeah please feel free to just uh, drop us a comment there and what you uh, understand your trading dream is and how your uh, reality has been but uh, that's what we'll talk about uh, for uh, the, uh, the majority of our session today. There's lots of that to cover. It's, a, it's quite a big, broad expanse of a subject and uh, lots of interesting uh, insight to be able to share with you. So, you know, as I said, we're going to talk about, uh, you know, what people expect when they uh, when they start their trading. OK, what uh, what exactly is the dream? OK, so uh, I appreciate that, uh, you know, after many years of trading for myself and many years of uh, helping and supporting traders across the uh, entire spectrum from uh, sort of uh, institutional traders to beginning retail traders, it's uh, it's important to understand that uh, the dream is quite a personal thing, okay? And uh, as I said, it's uh, if you're kind enough to share what your dream was when you first came to trading, that, uh, you know, I'd appreciate that, that uh, that helps us all. It's good for us to be able to share. And, uh, you know, we'll talk about, well, you know, what does the, uh, what does the reality look like for, for most traders, all right? What does it, uh, you know, what does the reality turn into after a, after a period of trading uh, and then we're going to talk about i'm going to sort of cover a little bit about you know how to find your own trading dream right what is uh, what is uh, what is your own sort of uh, uh, trading vision okay where is it that your uh, goals and objectives are looking to take you and what i'm actually going to do is i'm, I'm going to just share some experience some experiences from my uh, from my own trading experience uh, and from also my experience as a set of co coaching thousands of traders over the year okay just uh, finding out and understanding to help traders you know some uh, some salient and insightful points that uh, if you can take on board will, will help you uh, move you towards your uh, towards your own uh, trading dream and trading reality becoming uh, one and the same uh, one and the same thing So uh, Peter says, just starting out on my trading journey, hope to eventually just have a second income from uh, trading. Well, thank you for that, Peter. Appreciate the uh, appreciate you uh, uh, contributing there. And uh, you know, it's a uh, the trading journey is a, is a wonderful journey, okay? And it's uh, it'll be an eventful one, and that's what we're going to talk a little bit about uh, today. So hopefully, uh, what we'll talk about here will uh, resonate with you and also give you a little bit of insight into how you can help yourself accelerate your own progress uh, upon that trading journey. But uh, thank you for sharing that with us, Peter. So uh, as always, you know, we appreciate here at Admiral Markets that you're always looking for uh, additional support from uh, from our uh, the Admiral Markets community. So uh, after this session, for the rest of the afternoon today, I'll be in the exclusive trading spotlight community. So where you can get some support after this uh, web know when you most need it we can discuss trading strategies upcoming market events and signal some more with other traders uh, you'll get some updates from myself and also from my colleagues Marcus and Jens who uh, provide some excellent content in there on an almost hourly basis again talking about their own particular uh, trading setups and how they view markets uh, and it's also an opportunity for you to sort of tap into any of the trading spotlight recordings of that you uh, that you may have missed so as I said after this session I'll be in there for the rest of the afternoon you're very welcome to join me if you have uh, questions or points that you'd like to uh, to discuss you can get on there at registering at tradersyard.com uh, and you'll be able to join the uh, trading spotlight group tradersyard.com forward slash group forward slash 312 at uh, which my uh, admirable colleague will be able to sort of put up there in the chat box there for you to uh, to, to click on and join us after this uh, particular webinar 
So uh, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, don't know me, my name is Paul Wallace. So, so after, a, uh, after a career in the uh, military, I've uh, been uh, trading there for a, for a good while now and I've been traded uh, you know, not only for funds for myself, but also for hedge funds and for high net worth clients. Uh, primarily, I look to focus on trading FX indices and commodities. And uh, for my sort of swing and position traders, I'm primarily a dominant trend trader. Uh, and I like to sort of trade mean reversion trades on the, an intraday basis. So, you know, I've got uh, plenty of experience of, uh, you know, that journey between the sort of the trading dream and the trading reality. Uh, and as I said, I, you know, I've coached thousands of traders for about 10 years or so now and just, uh, you know, had the great experience of sort of, you know, seeing how uh, traders devolve, uh, you know, how they, uh, the difference between evolution and revolution in their own trading journey and, and you know, how they can actually make that sort of trading dream and trading reality uh, one and the same thing. And as for uh, Admiral Markets, well, you know, we're a Forex and CFD broker with uh, over 8,000 financial instruments with offices in 20 countries there, licensed and regulated across a wide range of regulatory uh, authorities and environments, uh, providing competitive spreads on some of the most popular uh, trading instruments there, like Euro, Dollar and DAX 30, and allowing you to engage in markets with the world's most popular trading platforms, MT4 and MT5, which you can uh, avail yourself of from your phone, your desktop and your browser, uh, and also provide you access to to the yeah, Admiral Market Supreme Edition plugin to help you there with your trading. If you have any uh, questions about that, then please get in touch with your account representative and they'll be very, very happy to help guide you. So, you know, as we said today, we're going to talk about the trading dream versus uh, trading reality. So, you know, not unsurprisingly, uh, many people are attracted to trading because of the lifestyle that they believe it can offer them. Unfortunately, many traders have poorly set expectations and goals, and this leads to poor performance, frustration, and failure. Today, we'll share the difference between the trading dream and the trading reality, and understanding this difference will help you manage your own expectations, goals, and behaviors, which will help you ultimately succeed. And it is very true that you know many traders are attracted to trading because of a, of a particular lifestyle that they uh, that they are looking to uh, to achieve. Um, but what I can actually say is, uh, after as I said, after you know sort of ten years of coaching traders across a broad spectrum, from traders starting out as complete beginner newbie retail traders to traders trading you know hundred million dollar books at uh, at banks and hedge funds, is that. What you realize is that, uh, you know, if there's one thing I can share with you is that success is a very, very personal thing. OK, success is a very personal thing. And it's a lot of it becomes, you know, helpful about, you know, what actually defines a success in your uh, in your uh, in your own view, in your own in your own mind. Not everybody wants speedboats and such, but, uh, you know, it can be a very it can be just a, uh, a very personal thing. Some people want to trade full time. Some people like Peter, they're just looking for an additional income. Other people, you know, want to sort of move on to sort of trading for funds and such. But it's actually becomes very, uh, it's a very personal thing. And part of it is about helping you. It's about being getting very, very clear on what it is that you're actually looking to uh, to achieve. And so that, so that you know, there is, uh, there is congruence between your trading dream and your re reality rather rather than the sort of being divergent. So, you know, what is the dream? Well, you know, I've, uh, as I said, I've you know, traded for many years and been around thousands of traders over those, uh, over those years. And very often, you know, a, a dream that is portrayed or maybe even sold to people by, you know, let's say uh, unscrupulous types is that, you know, trading is easy, okay? And that, you know, within a short space of time, you're gonna be getting on your private jet to fly to your private island, to hang out on your private yacht with, private cars and living a, uh, a lavish lifestyle. And, you know, many people are attracted to that. Many people, you know, sort of uh, are, are brought to trading because they believe that that is what, you know, their, uh, that's what their trading dream is in terms of a lifestyle and actually, you know, what they're looking to achieve for themselves. And that is attractive. It provides an element of motivation. It's all very outcome based, but it is what provides that kind of initial motivation. 
you know, and uh, for those of you joining us, okay, you know, just uh, put it down. Is that uh, is that what you thought the uh, the trading dream was? Is this what is this what attracted you to trading in the first place? Is this what you thought that um, you know you'd be uh, looking to sort of uh, strive towards with your own trading uh, endeavors? Because it's uh, it's not you know it's not necessarily bad. Okay, it's not necessarily bad. We all need an element that gives us some sort of initial motivation and inspiration. Uh, it's about uh, it's about whether that dream sort of either comes to sort of to help us or to hinder us so you know whereas we have that as the dream well you know what the reality can become is the reality can become very very different the reality can become one of uh, you know of a sort of a pain, frustration, failure. Uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, in terms of uh, in terms of sort of you know uh, uh, generating pips, uh, it can feel like you are uh, uh, more like uh, sort of uh, <laughs> more like you're doing a little bit of uh, cleaning up the muck on the farmyard. Uh, you know, it can literally be that uh, case of you know you thinking that you're going to be living in a uh, in a uh, private yacht on a you know going to your private island, uh, and in fact it's uh, you know more like to be sort of market traders like you see in the uh, in the in the UK in the BBC uh, comedy only fools and horses, and you know that is the you know the reality can become very very different from the dream, and a, a lot of that is to do with the, the difference between you know expectations and reality in terms of you know sort of uh, understanding that you know what your what your outcome driven goals may actually help inspire you the actual reality of operating and engaging as a trader in the market can be very very different and you know what we want to do today is to actually sort of uh, help you uh, as i say help you kind of close the gap between your trading dreams and your trading reality rather than them actually diverging where that uh, leads to that kind of frustration and uh, uh, and failure that uh, people experience and uh, Vincenzo says is that uh, the reality is that almost everyone loses money on their first year of uh, trading, uh, and that's not it's not unusual, Vincenzo. You're absolutely right, not unusual. Uh, you know, and it's a uh, that becomes down to as uh, as I just said there a little bit earlier is that you know it's about expectations versus reality. You know, what we find is that you know um, traders they're quite goal driven. Okay, so they set themselves very lofty, very strident goals, really. Uh, objectives that are far out there but the reality is that you know uh, invariably they're sort of you know generally underskilled okay and sort of overconfident and underskilled and that can be quite a uh, a challenging combination when it comes to sort of learning how to engage with uh, with markets so as i said you know what we're going to do is sort of share a few ideas okay from from my own you know experience of trading from from years of coaching and teaching traders about well what can you do to ensure that you know your trading dream and trading reality become very very you know close they're very similar rather than you know being a, a, a sort of a divergent and frustrating experience well, you know, with that in mind, you know, one of the first points I talk about, okay, to try and help people, as you know, Vincenzo made a, a worthy comment there just before, is that you know, one of the first you can realise is that you are you are a risk manager first, and then a, a trader and a speculator second, and uh, that might seem a little bit strange to some people if you're completely beginner to trade. You must be thinking, well, no, Paul, I'm a trader, I'm a trader, I've got to get my trades on, I've got to I've got to engage with the market. But uh, let me assure you, ladies and gentlemen, you know, your first principle should be to manage risk first, okay. Now, in all of the, the webinars that you know I've done for Admiral Markets over the years, you know, we've been very, very strident okay, about ensuring that you are a risk manager first. Managing risk first is just the number one element that you, you know that you can do to help yourself uh, as a certainly as a newbie trader in terms of your uh, progression and your journey. And as you can see there, the sort of you know the uh, the fund manager there, Mr. George Soros, you know, his quote there is, "My principle is to survive first and make money afterwards," and that's uh, that's absolutely spot on. Whether whether you uh, uh, you love or loathe Mr. Soros, you know that that quote is absolutely right on the money when it comes to uh, operating and engaging in financial markets. Your principle is to survive first and then make money afterwards. And the way you survive first is be by being a risk manager first. Okay, managing risk, managing your capital. Okay, is the number one thing that you can actually do to help you in your journey, to help you make your uh, trading dream and trading reality the uh, the very same thing. 
you. And here's another great quote from a uh, from a you know, very well regarded American trader, John Carty, who wrote a trading book called Mastering the Trade, which is a it's a good book to read. Okay, and here he talks. Mr. Carter says amateur traders focus on how much money they can make on each trade. Professional traders focus on limiting risk and protecting capital. Professionals always take money away from amateurs. And that is very, very true. And it's absolutely spot on. And what I'd like to do is just make a, a, a real a clarification point here is that, you know, when people firstly read that quote, they may think, well, an amateur trader is sort of, you know, is a, is a retail trader at home and a professional trader is somebody who is working for uh, an institution. And I'd just like to make that very clear. That's, that's not exactly the, uh, the definition of it. Okay. You know, an amateur trader is someone there who will focus on how much money they can make on each trade. And that, that doesn't matter whether you're, you're trading a, a a small account at home in your laptop or whether you're trading a big book on a desk for a year for a bank or an institution okay amateur traders focus on how much money they can make professional traders and it doesn't matter whether you're trading two thousand dollars or two hundred million dollars professional traders focusing on limiting risk and protecting capital and the interesting thing for yourself ladies and gentlemen is you get to choose okay you get to choose about whether you're an amateur trader or a professional trader in that sense. So, you know, you can choose to be a professional trader who's focusing on limiting risk and protecting capital. And that's it. That is, comes back to that point of you being a risk manager first and a trader second. That's what you always have to be doing, managing risk first and foremost. You know, analysts, analysts are paid to make right calls. Okay. Traders are paid to manage risk. And that's what sometimes that's what sometimes people you know don't understand, you know, in the terms of their uh, let's say their their initial trading dream. Okay, they don't realize that traders are paid to manage risk. The better you are at managed risk, the better your progression will be as a uh, as a trader. And as it says there, the simple point is if you're not managing risk. You're going to end up as roadkill, and uh, and I don't want you to end up as roadkill. We don't actually want you. We want you to have you know a great experience as a trader. We want you to have a great journey and a great uh, you know and a great uh, experience both the years trading with Admiral Marcus, but also trading and engaging in markets and in your own sort of evolution and development as a trader. And you know the truth is, if you're not managing risk, you'll end up as roadkill. So please take that on board, okay? If you're just starting out, if you're just looking, all right, just make sure that you are always managing risk, okay? On every trade, every session, every day, every week, every month, every quarter, every year, you are always. And it, and that doesn't really matter. That doesn't matter whether you've been trading for for two weeks or two decades, okay? If you're not managing risk, you'll end up as roadkill. So, you know, one of the other uh, ways we can help sort of uh, uh, generate to kind of our, turn our trading uh, dream into our trading reality is, is to recognize that everybody pays for their education in the market, ladies and gentlemen. And it says, it says here, work out what you need to educate yourself because everybody pays one way or another. So what do I actually mean by that? Well, I mean that you're either going to go down one of, one of two routes. You know, you're going to have like a formal education or an informal education. You know, uh, formal education is you know, might be someone that you know you pay for a mentorship or you pay to do uh, their trading education. Okay, you you pay to work with someone, you pay to work you know on a you know with a, a prop shop, etc. You know, or alternatively, an informal one is where you're actually you, know, you just choose to learn yourself. Okay, you choose to learn yourself from from books, from from what is available uh, out there on the internet. I'm not just not saying that you know one is necessarily better than the other. They can back your decision whether to go down the formal route or informal route might be shaped by your particular uh, situation that you find yourself in. But what you just have to realise is that everybody pays for their education. You're either going to pay in in money, okay, in terms of going down a formal route, or you're going to pay in time, okay, if you're going down the let's say the self-taught route, all right. So you know, don't think that uh, you know it's a case of one is better than the other. It's a case of understanding you know where you are in your particular situation in your life at the moment. But also just accepting, accepting that everybody pays for their education. Okay, if you're going to do the informal route of just going through the, the copious, fantastic, you know, fantastic uh, uh, education resources that we have here at Admiral Markets, that you know you'll you'll still pay in time because you'll be learning how to trade. Okay, you'll be taking trades, you'll be you know learning how to engage with markets. That will that will take particularly longer, and that's fine. That might actually work with your particular situation at this moment in your uh, in your own particular life. But just recognize everyone pays for their education. There is no, there is no escaping that. Okay. There is no, there is no shortcut there. Lots of people try, lots of people would like there to be, but, but there isn't, ladies and gentlemen, right? Everybody pays one way or another.
one of my other uh, uh, points, okay, to turn is, is you have to learn how to trade for yourself, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate that, you know, in the, the modern world and in, and in the technology, the fantastic array of technology that we have, you know, we have uh, available to ourselves that actually, you know, it could be easy to, you know, to, to believe to sort of, you know, you can just buy a trading robot off the internet and plug it in and just let it run away there on your MetaTrader platform. Or you could actually just, you know, try a, a signal service, okay, and just have them do the uh, work for you. Whilst they have their pros and cons, and, and they have been covered by my colleagues in some excellent webinars here on the uh, Trading Spotlight webinar series, and please, by all means, check them out on either the YouTube channel or the, the Facebook page or on Traders Yacht. My, my own opinion is that ultimately, for kind of long-term sustainable success as a trader, you have to learn how to trade for yourself. Okay, there is no, there is no shortcut. There is no getting around that. Okay, you have to learn how to trade for yourself. Your success as a trader, okay, will have the, the most long-term consistent success as a trader when you trade your own method, whatever that might be, whichever method might suit your personality, you know, the best is actually where the, uh, the aim for your long-term sustainable success is. Now, admittedly, some people might actually have skills that allow them to, to code and run and actually run their own trading robots. But even still, they will be trading robots that they will have programmed themselves that will be based on their own trading experience, that they will have you know, garnered that experience over what could be weeks, months, years, decades, that they encapsulate into their own trading uh, robots. And it is about understanding you have to learn how to trade for yourself. Okay. Once again, there is no uh, there is no shortcuts there. There is no there is no magic lotion that you can uh, that I can sell you that you can smother yourself in that will turn you into an overnight success as a uh, as a trader. I wish there was. Sadly, there isn't. But you have to realize part of part of the journey is about understanding yourself and about learning how to trade for yourself, and actually turning that into an enjoyable experience. Turning about understanding how you're going to learn so much about markets. You're going to learn so much about how the world market shaped the world, and the world shaped the markets. Understanding about yourself. Okay, what are the kind of the uh, the pros and the cons within yourself? What's the good, the bad, and the ugly within your personality? And finding ways to to mitigate your weaknesses and to leverage your strengths. And actually. In Embrace that journey, enjoy it, because actually it will be, especially for young men, it is a fantastic insight, okay, into sort of self-mastery, into understanding about yourself and actually developing, you know, a range of skill sets that will actually go away and beyond, beyond just your, your pure trading. And with that in mind, ladies and gentlemen, you know, you, you have to learn to walk before you can run. All right, you, you really do. It's, uh, it's you know, you know, generally, as I say, you know, people who come to trading, they, they tend to be quite, quite driven, okay? They're quite ambitious. They are, you know, quite uh, energized. They're quite inspired. They have, you know, goals and they're, you know, they're looking to set them and they're looking to work hard at that. And so the very natural thing is that, of course, they want to throw themselves into the uh, into into trading. They want to engage with markets in the perhaps sometimes the most kind of like you know aggressive uh, 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 sort of uh, risk accepting or risk embracing style. Uh, and sometimes that can be a little bit of a case of you know sort of running before you can even walk before you can even crawl. But trading, it's almost a case of you have to crawl, then you have to walk, and then you can run. All right. It's, uh, there is uh, once again. There isn't there, there isn't the shortcut that you had uh, that you think there might be. Okay, you have to learn to walk before you can run. And what I mean by that is that you know there are just certain processes of certain hoops that you have to go through in terms of understanding yourself. Okay, understanding you know your uh, as I said just before there the sort of pros and cons within your own personality, but also understanding the, the, the markets. Okay, that you wish to engage in, understanding your methods. All right, understanding that you're making sure that your method is uh, is uh, aligned with the uh, correct market environment. That you understand money management and risk management, and also, as I said, you're understanding yourself. And that's it, you know, as I said there, you have to learn to walk before you can run, and so take some time scaling up your position size. And what, what does that mean? Well, uh, invariably, what I have learned when, you know, working with retail traders is that they uh, invariably they are undercapitalized in their business for the particular goals and objectives that they hold for themselves. And so invariably, what happens is they look to scale up their position size to trading far too quickly. So they have, you know, a, a month or two of success as a trader. They're generating, you know. 
30, 40 pips a week at, you know, one euro a year, one euro a pip. Okay. And just generally just, they've just found their groove. Okay. They've just got themselves into a, uh, into a nice pattern. They're trading well, they're in a good space, but invariably what they realize is that, you know, they're, they're sort of still not making enough to, to sort of go full time. And so what they try to do is they try to scale up their position size far too swiftly. So suddenly overnight they decide to go from trading one euro a pip to try and trade you 10 euros a pip okay on a thing and then of course that scale up is just you know they think well it's just the same as a trading but i can assure you i can assure you mentally it's not okay mentally they will just it will just trigger elements of your behavior okay elements of your uh, of your biases and psyche okay and actually it can sort of you know it can actually be counterproductive it can actually be detrimental so in terms of one of the particular elements of learning to walk before you can run, it's about taking time scaling up your position size, all right? And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in depth in, in other future webinars. And I, I think my uh, uh, colleague Marcus and Jens, they've touched upon it themselves. It's a ring and we recognize that, you know, traders want to scale up, but actually it's about doing it in a, uh, in, in a sort of a, uh, in a calm process like manner rather than just uh, trying to like hit a uh, like hit a home run on every swing like you would if you were playing uh, baseball. And one of the things that can help you with that is of course, you know, is, is ensuring that you, you know, get yourself a, uh, a mentor because, because actually everybody needs one. Everybody needs their Mr. Miyagi. And I appreciate for those of a certain age group, wouldn't Mr. Miyagi was uh, from a movie, The Karate Kid in the 80s, or they need their own Yoda from uh, the Star Wars uh, series. But it is true that everybody everybody needs one. And that, that doesn't necessarily need to be a, a formal mentor that, you know, that you that you pay for. You'll find these days, okay, with, uh, with you know, with social media, you have the opportunity to, to tap into lots of great traders out there. There's lots of uh, meetup groups that for traders that you can sort of tap in to and, and work with and uh, and they you know they may actually help they may actually help you okay and uh, Vincenzo says hi Daniel San there you go Vincenzo very good very good you remember Mr Miyagi there but you know even though even though uh, even though Star Wars and the Credit Kid have nothing to do with trading but what it is is about understanding the importance of being able to sort of tap into into a you know into a series of mentors or series of a uh, someone who has you know sort of skills uh, you know ahead of you okay and that doesn't necessarily mean to be someone who has to trade for 20 years that might just be someone who's a couple of years ahead of you but you know recognizes the the kind of the pitfalls that are available for all traders and, and actually can just help you develop your own particular uh, uh, trading style but you know what i realize is that everybody needs a, a, a mentor it's very very difficult to make the leap, okay, from uh, conscious incompetence to conscious competence in any endeavor, okay, without the help of an, you know, an element of mentorship, coaching, education, okay, whether you're learning to trade, whether you're learning to drive, whether you're learning to hit a golf ball, and we always need an element of a mentor to get us across that, that hurdle from, effectively, from conscious incompetence to, to conscious competence. You know, and, and a part of that is in terms of mentorship, in terms of like retail traders is that, you know, I speak to lots of traders all the time. Okay. And, uh, you know, and, and hear and understand their, uh, their kind of their need for a mentor or the, you know, what they'd like for a mentor, but generally, you know, generally most people know that, you know, how they should lead their life. Okay. And it's not necessarily trading. We all know that we should sleep more, exercise more, watch less television, eat a better diet, drink less. Okay. We all know that we all know that. But at some level, you know, at some level, we uh, we either you know we either resent that or we reject it or we go against it. Okay, and actually having a mentor is what can actually help provide a level of accountability, and that's what can be really helpful for a uh, for a new trader. Okay, having a mentor that will hold you accountable so that you are performing at your best until you have developed the levels of self trust. And the self-belief and the self-confidence that you know and can rely upon yourself to do the right thing at the right time in a market, regardless of what is going on in that market. So that mentorship provides that accountability. And that can sometimes be very, very useful for retail traders who, let's say, have worked in a they've worked in a job, okay, so they've always had a boss. Okay, and then they go home and actually they find they have no boss anymore. They have no accountability. And so, you know, it allows them to sort of behave however they particularly wish. 
whilst actually having a mentor can provide that accountability, it just keeps you on the straight and narrow, you know, keeps you, uh, keeps you just doing the right things at the right time. And that, that can actually be unbelievably benefit. And, you know, quite importantly, a, uh, a mentor should help you develop your own style, all right, and stop you from making a trading or fashion faux pas. Well, what do I actually mean by this, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, part of this is about, you know, uh, as I said a little bit earlier, you know, traders tend to have consistent success when they trade in, a, in their own style, okay, They're, you know, from their own trading, okay. But part of that is developing your own style. Now, you know, what I talk about is this is the difference between, you know, having principles and style. So uh, if you look, uh, you know, if you go into a coffee shop or if you go into your office, okay, uh, there are principles in place. So if you talk about fashion or clothing, there are principles that everybody follows. So principles are, well, principles are firstly that, you know, people are wearing clothes when you're in society. But the other thing can be a case of, you know, everybody's wearing shoes, everybody's wearing trousers, everybody's wearing a top. Those are the kind of rules. Those are the principles that nobody, nobody breaks, okay? Because they know if they break them, they'll get in trouble. And it's the same with, you know, it's the same with trading, okay? There are certain principles with trading that you need to ensure that you follow. So things like managing risk on every single trade, okay? Not over trading, okay? Making sure that you are, uh, you know, trading in alignment with, you know, you know, who you are and what's your best for your particular situation. But as I said on that kind of analogy with the sort of fashion, even though everybody's following the same principles of, you know, shoes, trousers, a top, nobody's wearing the same even people who are wearing suits okay those suits can be different different color even those people wearing jeans it could be different colors different jeans that's their own individual style uh, now it's not for me to give anybody uh, fashion tips i can assure you ladies and gentlemen but what i do mean is about it's about developing your own style so you make sure a mentor helps you stick to your rules okay stick to your principles but also allows you to develop your own style okay and that's what a good mentor should be able to, to actually help you achieve and, uh, you know, if you don't believe me, let's just, well, you know, here's Paul Tudor Jones. He's in the Market Wizards uh, book. It's, uh, it's a great book for, for traders to read. Okay, he's a, he's a supremely successful trader and has been for 30 odd years. And yet he still pays, you know, Tony Robbins over a million dollars a year to, uh, to actually to mentor him. Right. So, you know, it, it, that, that doesn't matter. You know, it just doesn't matter what level of success they always have good coaches, good mentors around them to actually help them either get better or maintain their level of performance. That's something that maybe people forget about, okay? In our, in our life and in our trading life, we're always going through an area of peaks and troughs, peaks, troughs, and plateaus. And, you know, actually having good mentors, good people around is what can help keep you on a peak longer. So uh, if you're unable to pay Mr. Tony Robbins a million dollars a year to, uh, to sort of uh, mentor coach you at the moment, and that's understandable, one of the ways you can do it to begin with is to have a plan and to start keeping great trading records, right? And what I will tell you is, you know, in, in, in all my years of, you know, of coaching and working with traders is uh, all of the good traders that I've worked with, and, you know, and I've been very fortunate to work with some fantastic traders, all of them had great records okay all of them kept great records dr alexander elder says you know show me a trader with great records and i'll show you a great trader and he's absolutely right from all of my experience and so this is something that you know if you're still starting out if you're you know if you're uh, uh, operating under let's say severe capital restraints within your trading business this is something you can do okay it's free you can keep great trading records and then you analyze them to accelerate your trading progress you know, it's an absolute gold mine, just making sure you've got great trading records because it helps you develop that style that uh, you're looking for. So that's what we'll be, uh, uh, be looking at. Uh, Elimata says, how to see if he has a great track record, for example, how could we, uh, how could we check you? Well, you know, well, one of that ways is about keeping great records, okay, is actually keeping great trading records. You know, it'll help you develop as a trader, but then if you went to work with someone as a mentor, that would also enable you to be able to have that data to show you, and a, and a good mentor would be able to pick up on that and see that within that data, where there are areas that you could be developed, where there are areas they're actually doing well, and maybe where there's areas within your trading business that actually need to be, to be sidelined. One of the other things we talk about is that, uh, you know, we talked earlier about how you need to learn how to trade for yourself. Uh, and with that, you know, financial, social media uh, uh, really helps. 
It's about you learning to make your own decisions. That kind of feeds back into, as we said earlier, you know, you need to learn to trade for yourself. You know, there's fantastic, you know, you, you go onto the internet, there is unbelievable, you know, uh, amounts of data and information that you can tap into as a, as a private retail trader these days. It's, you know, where, from when I began years ago, it is just a completely different landscape. But with that, you know, is it's, it's a blessing you know, and a curse. And, and part of it is that you can find all sorts of information and you can get a deluge of information. Sometimes it can actually be just far too much for you. And that doesn't actually help you a great deal. What it is, it's about sort of, you know, ditching the, uh, the, the talking heads and realizing that you don't need as much information as, as, you, uh, as you think you do. It's important for you to know the economic calendar for when particular important elements of information are coming out. But generally, outside of that, you need to learn to make your own decisions, okay? Don't be going on social media looking for sort of trading tips, okay? You need to learn how to trade yourself and to make your own decisions, back your own decisions, review your own decisions, because that's how you'll improve. One of the other elements just to share with you, especially, you know, lots of retail traders will use technical analysis as their decision-making tool. And that's absolutely fine. There's no, no problem with that whatsoever. We all need to find a way to be able to make a decision. Am I going to be a buyer? Am I going to be a seller? Or am I just going to sit on my hands? But what you have to also realize is that fundamentals will trump technicals, right? So you need to be prepared to adapt and overcome. And what do I mean by that? You can have the most beautiful sort of, uh, you can have the most beautiful sort of technical picture, okay? The most beautiful technical setup that might provide you with a great trading setup. But then, you know, if you take that setup five minutes before major US news is coming out, like on the Friday just gone, where we had uh, the US non-farm payrolls jobs, it doesn't matter how good that technical picture is. I can assure you, you know, when that fundamental news comes out, regardless of what happens, how beautiful the technical picture is, that news, that new news coming into the market will trump the technicals, okay? And that is very important for you to understand. Especially in the modern day and age, you know, you can have a great picture there, beautiful technical analysis picture, take a trade, and then Mr. Trump will tweet something five minutes later, which just throws the markets awry, okay? So you just need to be uh, aware of that. Be prepared to adapt and overcome. So one of the things is you make sure you know the economic calendar when it's coming out. Uh, and also, you know, you just make sure that you manage risk, okay? So that if the market changes rapidly against you, you are covered, okay? And you're, and you're doing the right job of managing risk. What can help you with that in terms of your decision making is about less is more. Keep it simple, ladies and gentlemen. So, you know, I've just got an example of a chart there. You know, people will send me a chart like that and say, you know, Paul, would you help me? I'm struggling to make trading decisions. I don't really know what to do. And even like me, with all of my trading experience, I will look at a chart like that and say, I, I, I'm not sure how to trade this either. Because there's just far too much information on your chart far too much okay people add indicator after indicator after indicator because they think it will give them an element of you know they're like, they're like a security blanket it will keep them safe but the reality is it doesn't work like that less is more keep it simple keep your charts clean keep your charts simple it's just about being able to make good decisions and it's hard to make decisions when you're overwhelmed by too much data And part of that leads into recognizing you know, what type of trader are you? are you? Are you Rambo or are you the sniper? And what does that actually mean? As well, you know, I, I see lots of new traders being a bit like Rambo. They're, they're spraying trades like bullets, okay? And taking, you know, 20, 30 trades a day, okay? Just like, like Rambo spraying machine gun bullets, okay? Whereas actually the good traders, they're more like a sniper, right? It's almost like what sniper, they're, they're patient. They're waiting for their setup. When the setup occurs, they're like a sniper. Bang, one shot, take out the trade, okay? That's what they're looking to do. Over trading will kill you as a trader, especially as a retail trader. What you wanna be doing is you wanna keep your powder dry, okay? What you wanna be doing is you wanna be saving your trades, your bullets for that high probability shot. So if at the moment you're trading I mean, massively you know, numbers of high frequency, you know, like your Rambo, it's about time to start thinking to become more like a sniper, okay? Recognizing your best setup, being patient, waiting for it, recognizing where that occurs, and then being lying in wait for it to, to basically to take your trade when the opportunity sets up for you. What will help you that is getting comfortable with being wrong, ladies and gentlemen. All right, you're going to be wrong lots of times as a trader. All right, many, many times. I still am wrong, wrong quite a lot of times as a trader, and that's okay. That's okay. 
Financial markets, huge, they're global, they're dynamic, they're fluid, they're changing, okay? As we just said a few slides back, you can have a fantastic picture, beautiful technical analysis picture, you take your trade and then something happens in the world, Trump tweets, something happens and the market changes, okay? And people take that on board, they take that personally, they think that the market is out to get them. It isn't, okay? You're just wrong, okay? But at that time, okay, the time that the trade set up, that was the right trade for you to take. The trade says nothing about you as a human being. Sometimes people take it very personally, and this actually doesn't mean anything. You are not your trades. And what can help you with that is effectively focusing on the quality of your trades rather than the outcome. Very often we're driven to focus on the outcome. We want winning trades. But actually what's more important is focusing on the quality of your trades. Did you make good decisions? That's one thing that you can make a note of, you can review and you can improve. As I said, you are not your losing trades, ladies and gentlemen. Losing trades say nothing about you, They're nothing about your self-worth as a human being. Focus on the quality of your trades rather than the outcome. And the journey is gonna take longer than you imagine. So have patience, enjoy the journey. As I said earlier on, okay, if the journey is gonna be there, it's gonna be a, a journey into understanding yourself and mastering yourself. So embrace it, enjoy it, okay? Take it as for what it is, you're gonna have a fantastic time, okay? And if you're managing risk, well then, you know, you'll be allowed to sort of to stay in the markets, to sort of develop the skills, the behaviors, and the experience to be able to help you develop as a trader. So as we said there, ladies and gentlemen, as we've covered, okay, you're a risk manager first and a trader second. Everybody pays for their education in one way or another. You have to learn how to trade for yourself. Get yourself a mentor, have a plan, and keep great records. Financial media rarely helps that much. Learn to make your own decisions. Fundamentals will always trump technicals, okay, so be prepared to understand when they may change. Keep it simple, right? Less is more. And be comfortable being wrong. It says nothing about you. Focus on the quality of your decisions, not the outcome of your trades. And by all means, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the trade journey. Trading is a, a fantastic endeavor, okay? And trading has provided me with some amazing opportunities in my life. And I consider myself very, very fortunate. But like any journey, there are, as I say, there are peaks, there are plateaus and the troughs. And part of it is about enjoying that journey. And I hope you will enjoy your journey as well as uh, through your uh, trading endeavors. So as I said, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you found that useful. If you want to sort of question me more, then I'm going to be in the uh, Traders Yard and the Traders Spotlight community for the uh, rest of the afternoon. And you can join us then. As I said, my colleagues, Marcus and Jens, they're, 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 uh, they've got some excellent stuff in, uh, in there. And don't forget to join us next time, Trading Spotlight, okay? On Wednesday, my colleague Marcus is going to teach you all about how to trade with Heiken Ashi, talking about what actually are Heiken Ashi candles and how do they work, what information do they give for you as a trader, and how can traders incorporate these into their own trading. That's going to be on Wednesday, December 11th at uh, 2 p.m. London time. Check your inbox for the webinar link and head over to the Admiral Markets page if you need to uh, register for the, uh, the live webinars. As always, there's plenty of analysis and education on AdmiralMarkets.com. And if you want to contact us here and now, or if you're watching this uh, later on YouTube or Facebook, contact us, email hello at AdmiralMarkets.com, or as you can see there, YouTube.com forward slash AdmiralMarkets, or Facebook.com forward slash AdmiralMarkets Global. I hope you found that uh, useful, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you found that give you a little bit of insight. I'm sharing with you from, from you know, my own journey, from journey of you know, working with you know, thousands of traders over the years. Take away those particular elements and actually just build them into your own trading plan, okay? And I guarantee that they will help you in your, over in your evolution as a trader. And as always, I wish you the very best of success in your own trading journeys. And I look forward to speaking to you, uh, to you soon. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Peter says, great webinar. Thank you. You're very welcome, Peter. Thanks for joining us, okay? Uh, Imantis is talking about the trading spotlight. You can see that there is a link there, okay, just above you in the chat box there from my uh, colleague at Admiral Markets. And if you'll uh, click into that, you'll be able to, uh, to, to join us. As I said, I wish you the best success on your own trading journey, ladies and gentlemen. And I look forward to speaking to you soon. Many thanks.